Hello and welcome to the basics on Invicta. Invicta is one of the oldest steam locomotives in preservation, having been delivered in April 1830 by Robert Stevenson and Company. She is also one of the earliest engines to be preserved, being highlighted as an historical relic as early as 1844 and kept for posterity. Sadly, unlike more famous locomotives such as Rocket or Locomotion, Invicta is not up there amongst the top 10 of well-known early locomotives. So what do we know about this little-known Kentish iron horse? She was built for the Canterbury and Whitstable Railway, which had been first promoted by William James in 1823, but it would take a few more years for the idea to come to fruition. An enabling act was obtained in 1825 to build a railway running more or less due north from the ancient cathedral city to its nearest harbour at Whitstable. George Stevenson was appointed engineer-in-chief, assisted by John Dixon. A youthful Joseph Locke was attached to the project from 1827. The railway was worked by a combination of rope haulages on inclined planes and by a single locomotive. The single greatest engineering feature of the line was a single track Tyler's Hill Tunnel, and the line was built throughout as single track with convenient passing places. There were two, later three, rope worked inclined planes, which used stationary engines to haul the trains. The first, just under two miles in length, was from Canterbury to Tyler's Hill. The second, just over a mile in length, was from Tyler's Hill to the summit at Clowes Wood. From Clowes Wood, the line was worked by locomotive power into the town of Whitstable. The new harbour at Whitstable, engineered by the famous Thomas Telford, opened in 1832. Whilst wagons were worked up the inclines by stationary engines, they were let down by gravity under the control of a brakesman. One contemporary newspaper remarked that the wagons reached the then dizzying speeds of 25 miles per hour. Invicta was ordered from Robert Stevenson and Company of 4th Street, Newcastle upon Tyne in September 1829. She was delivered from Newcastle by sea to Whitstable on the 15th of April 1830. The line, colloquially known as the Crab and Winkle, opened on the 3rd of May 1830. On that occasion, the opening train consisted of 23 wagons, one of which was an elegant coach fitted up for the ladies. With much waving of flags, music and the firing of cannon, the first train was hauled out of Canterbury via the winding engines. The passengers travelling through the Tyler Hill Tunnel were the first ever to travel through a railway tunnel. At Clowes Wood, Invicta was coupled onto the train and she steamed triumphantly into Whitstable. Invicta is essentially an upscaled 040 version of Rocket. Whereas Rocket was designed for speed, Invicta was designed for power with great adhesion due to the inclines involved. Her original wheels were four feet in diameter, so a, a bit smaller than Rocket's but like rockets they were wooden with cast iron centres. Her present wheels are iron and they're a bit of a mismatched pair. The leading wheels are wrought iron with petal shaped spokes, whilst the trailing pair are cast iron with hollow spokes. Her boiler was originally eight feet long, that's two feet longer than that of rocket, and three feet three inches diameter, so a bit smaller than rockets in diameter. Running through the boiler were 25 3 inch outside diameter copper boiler tubes, exactly the same as Rocket. And there was an external copper firebox with a water jacket, the same as Rocket. The boiler pressure was also the same as Rocket at 50 psi. Similarly, the valve gear was the same as Rocket, a form of slip eccentric with manual override. But unlike Rocket, Invicta had its cylinders mounted at the smoke box end of the boiler. They are also bigger than those of Rocket, with a bore of 10 inches and an 18 inch stroke. In working order, she weighed about 6 tons, or about 2 tons heavier than Rocket. 
She also has an early steam dome mounted at the front end of the boiler in order to prevent priming and carryover of water into the cylinders. And this was due to her working on far steeper inclines than Rocket was ever envisaged to do. Invictor's first and perhaps only driver was Edward Fletcher. He was a Quaker who had been apprenticed to Robert Stevenson and Co and had been sent down south with the locomotive to Whitstable to erect her. He would go on to later be the chief mechanical engineer of the North Eastern Railway. Unfortunately, Invicta was found to lack sufficient power to work trains up the steep 1 in 50 incline out of Whitstable. So after only two years of use in 1832, a third stationary engine was built. This meant that Invicta was restricted to working only a short level stretch of track. In around 1838, she was radically rebuilt. This was probably because the original boiler tubes had needed replacing due to poor water use. Lacking local skills, the original boiler was lengthened and the original boiler tubes replaced by a single wrought iron flue, a curious retrograde of technology. The present rather peculiar square iron smoke box was probably provided during one of the Victorian restorations. The extended boiler meant that the original driving position at the rear of the engine was not possible, so the valve gear was rearranged to be worked from the left hand side, the driver being perched on a rather flimsy looking plank. Suffice to say, in this rebuilt form, Invicta was not successful, and in October 1839 was offered for sale, but no buyer could be found. Instead, the foresight directors of the Canterbury and Whitstable Railway ordered that she be kept under cover in Whitstable. When the line was leased by the South Eastern Railway in 1844, she was then stored at its Ashford Works. She was restored for the Railway Jubilee of 1875. In 1906, was donated to Canterbury Corporation and Victor was put on public display open to the elements until 1977. She was purchased by the Transport Trust and underwent a programme of conservation at York before being put on display at Canterbury Museum in 1980. But only this year she was moved to a new museum in Whitstable. So those are the basics on Invicta, one of Rocket's lesser known sisters and an equally lucky survivor. Please like, subscribe and share. Which early locomotive would you like to see covered in these videos? Please comment below.